Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Let's talk about light. Now, I'm going to start off with my rant because I think that's the best thing to do is start it off, get it over with, otherwise I'm just going to keep on ranting throughout this entire video. The problem that I have right now is that there are so many quote-unquote professionals and uh, advanced amateur photographers that are clueless with how to control light, how to uh, you know capture it, how you know where the shadow is, where the light is, where the main light versus fill light versus everything. You've got to know this, all right? You've got to be able to see the light in your head. If you're composing a portrait of someone and they're standing there and they're posed, doesn't matter how good the portrait is, if they've got a big you know, light spot on their nose that you didn't see because you're not concentrating on the light, you're more worried about everything else, then you know what? It's still a poor image. It's not going to do it any good. You've got to start off with good fundamentals of light. Being able to look at an image, look at a scene, even without even having the camera on or without even taking a picture. You need to be able to stop, look around in a scene and say, okay, well, the, it's pretty uh, over, overcast right now, the light's very soft, uh, you know, we have the brighter areas over there in the, this spot or that spot or the other spot. You've got to be able to see this. Um, I don't know how to get it to, uh, across to everyone. Um, sorry for the rant, but uh, it's just one of those things that's just been bothering me. I see all these images that don't have any interesting light in them. Um, if you have an image with interesting light, it doesn't matter if the, the, per the, the person in the image is you know young and beautiful or old and wrinkly, or if the composition's perfect, or if it uses any of the rules of composition, you know, none of that stuff matters. If it has great light, it has great light. And, you know, it, it, could, ju it could be, you know, the worst composed image, but if it has great light in it, it's still going to be a great photograph. So light trumps everything else about photography. Now, I mentioned also about being able to actually see the light in, a, in, in the image and as far as the different brightnesses and everything in it. You know, when you have sun or a brighter area of white, your eyes are going to be naturally drawn to that area. So you need to be able to see that and either recompose, change something about the image, maybe move your lighting around if at all possible. Uh, great example, one of the photos that I have here, uh, all I did was open a door up uh, in a scene and it made all the difference in the world. Unfortunately, I was too quick to delete the, the other photo, but doesn't matter the the before photo but um, anyway seeing that light seeing where it is bouncing around is everything in photography along with being able to see the entire scene and the the whole image composed all together before you take it all right I've actually got a challenge for you at the end of this video and uh, so I'm hoping you stick around for the whole thing next up I'm gonna show you a bunch of photos talk about some light and uh, yeah that that's next so what images do I have here? Well, this first one is actually a, uh, a photo of my baseball glove and a baseball. And it was taken with just some window light coming in the window, and I believe the baseball was just sitting on the back of my couch. I composed it real, really closely, but it's, it's all about the light. That's all it is. It's just the light in the image. Uh, this next one is actually a great example of no light on the subject. I actually silhouetted the, uh, this guy's name's Gary Ciano, uh, with his PowerPoint in the background. And you also have a little reflection off the screen of the laptop. Great image, and there is no light falling on him. It's still a great portrait. It still tells a story, and the fact that he's a financial planner giving a presentation. You, it still all works together. Uh, this next one is actually a portrait I created of uh, Caitlin in the studio. Great portrait, but I set the lights up myself. I knew where I wanted to position them with a main light, with a fill light, with a hair light, with a background light. And so I can see all those things as I'm working, as I'm composing that image. Not after, not take 20, 30, 40 photos and then realize how bad it looked. You know, I'm creating this stuff as I go along. Uh, this next one, 
it was more of a journalistic image. Uh, it was at a baseball game, and the coach just, uh, was looking through the fence. But you see this, you know, all this fence stuff coming through, and you got this really interesting light coming through. You can tell that it's baseball. You can tell it might be a coach or something along those lines. Again, interesting image. It it's all about that light. Uh, this one, you actually have shadow down here in the bottom and light coming in from the top. Angles. Angle of light is very, very important because if you have it coming in one direction, then you'll have sh probably have shadow on the other side. If there isn't shadow on the other side, depending upon the type of image you're trying to create, you can actually just uh, shade it, put like a black card or a, uh, something like that, or a black shirt like I'm wearing now, to actually pull some of that light away from that subject area or from that area in order to create that shadow. Uh, next one is some uh, uh, shoes from a wedding that I shot a while back. Uh, great photo, love it, and it's a high key photo. High key means that it's very bright in the background, okay? And that's what this is, very bright or almost completely white in the background. Now there was a lot of sun coming in the window. There was you know, a lot of light coming in through the window. It was relatively soft, but there was just enough light reflecting back into the shoes that that's all I needed to worry about. So it's about a matter of seeing that light. You know, I've tried to create this photo a couple of times in other locations, and it just hasn't been the same. You know, at other weddings, it hasn't been the same. That's just the way it is. Uh, this next one, same wedding, great image. Window light, that's it. All right, it's just great window light coming in. Uh, we have a little bit of a Rembrandt there. We have a nice shadow off of her nose. Everything just looks great. All right, nice and soft. Nice portrait. Same one, same sequence, same, same bride and everything. A uh, little bit different pose. She's looking at the camera. And the big thing that you need to see here is the catch lights in the eyes. All right. When you have a little spot of light in the eyes, right in the center like this, it is so awesome. It looks so, so good. And it just makes her eyes just jump out at you in an image like this. You add that, take that, and then you add in the uh, really, really sharp uh, eyes, and um, oh, man, you just get sucked in. And that's the kind of photo that you want to create, something that's really, really interesting. Next photo is another portrait. Uh, you know I'm big on portraits. That's my thing. Um, it's just available light. That's all this was. There's no flash in this, no nothing. But uh, the light was very soft. It's actually just underneath of a building, so if you have, say, a porch area or something like that, some kind of an overhang, uh, the light is typically softer when you were, you're you up under there. In fact, I just did a photo on Sunday. I was at the firehouse, and it was a big group of, like, 20 people, something like that, at the, at the firehouse, and uh, the doors were open. All the trucks were outside because we were actually having a special event, and when you step in there, that light is so soft on their faces. It looks so good and everyone's perfectly lit. I didn't need a flash, anything like that. Um, I don't think I can show you that photo, but it's really awesome. So up underneath some kind of an overhang, you can usually get some nice soft light. Uh, another one just has a great light to it. Uh, the light's coming down from above, so it's more of a butterfly light, okay? Um, it really accentuates her, her cheekbones and her smile. Uh, you still have just a tiny little bit of catch light in the eyes. I probably could have enhanced that if I really wanted to, but it's far enough away that I don't think you really need to. Uh, great black and white image. Frame in a frame, adds a composition. Awesome picture. Next one, this has flash on it. I know you might not believe me, but there is flash on his face. Great photo. Why is it great? because of the light on his face, all right? The, the flash is coming in from this, from the one side, just on his face, just to fill in that, the you know, fill in there, uh, and, and it just makes it an awesome photograph because you're lighting that part of the face from here to here, which is called the mask of the face. When you light that area, it makes it more interesting to us because we wanna see the face lit. We want to see the eyes and the nose, and that's just what we're drawn to because it's a part of human nature. So why not take advantage of that and light the face? That's what we're doing here with a portrait. Another one, uh, more of a butterfly lighting, still flash. Flash is balanced with the rest of the scene, and it works, 
all right? Nice, soft light. Could have just been sun. It could have just been a reflector or a diffused light coming in, but it was actually done with flash. Nice portrait. Next one is more of a, uh, a silhouette, but like I just said, having that little bit of light on the mask of the face, eyes, nose, uh, forehead, chin, mouth, cheeks, all that, having a little bit of light on there makes it so interesting. And you see his beard, and you see his glasses, uh, and the hat and everything really works. Great picture. Next one, very, very soft light for a baby. Great picture. We have, I think I did a video on this before, um, but hey, it's all about that light. A little bit of a catch light in the eyes there. Again, probably could have enhanced it a little bit. Don't want to go overboard. Definitely don't want to go overboard. But uh, other than that, still a really cute picture. Uh, there's another angle, again, lighting the mask of the face, the cheeks, the nose, all that stuff. You have the shadow on the uh, camera side, and that's okay. That's a good thing. This one, paying attention to the light direction, okay? You stand up, I was standing up and I'm looking inside of this balloon, and wow, look at that, look at that light in there. Look at that shadow, look at the silhouettes. That's awesome. Good stuff. Next one, this one... Uh, same scene, same day, I was shooting these, the photos of this balloon, but you know what? If I'd have been on the other side of the balloon, it'd have been on the shadow side, and it wouldn't have been lit. It wouldn't have looked good. But here, I have a little bit of shadow and all light on this other side. Makes for a great picture. Last couple pictures here. This photo of Dina, again, I'm lighting the mask of her face, all right? This part of the face, I'm lighting that. That's where I'm concentrating and I'm looking and I'm making sure that, that light looks good. Whether it's through her pose, whether it's through where I'm standing, whatever, it's probably a combination of everything. Um, I just kind of naturally do it anymore. I am going to be making more videos about that stuff, but um, you know, this is the good stuff. This is where, when you get that, that light on the face, it, again, it just trumps everything else, but then you add the good composition and the shallow depth of field and all those things, that's when you get great photographs and you take your stuff from mediocre to wow. Next one, uh, I actually did this photo uh, at the wedding a couple weeks ago. This is the one that I was telling you a little bit earlier where what I did is I actually just opened the door, uh, opened the front door, and it let this awesome rush of light right in on the steps. Why not take advantage of that? And it's composed very tightly, but I love it. I love how I love her eyes. I love the fact that it goes all the way down and, and shows her shoes and her feet and you know the dress there and everything about it. It's a great picture. Really nice light coming in and she's gonna love this picture. She hasn't even seen it yet, but I know she's gonna love it. Uh, last one, more again, more of a backlit. They're more in shadow. There is a little bit of light coming down, um, mainly on his shoulder there in the veil. But um, the cool thing about this picture is all the people in the background. All right, all these people that are clapping and taking pictures and this and that. This is one of my shots that I do all the time with a bride and groom. Just got married. They come up the aisle. I stop them and I have uh, have them uh, kiss and then take another photo of them. So um, that's a tip. You can steal that one if you really want to. Love that photo that I've been doing for a few years now. So what is the challenge that I want you guys to work on? Well, the challenge is, and I've actually done this a couple times with a couple of my groups, is to, number one, take a piece of uh, duct tape or something like that, put it over your screen, all right? Make sure that you cannot see the screen of your camera. And the second part of the challenge is, only 24 pictures. That's it. All right, you're allowed to take 24 without looking at the back of the screen. Let's see how you do. So there's a lot of parts to that. Number one, you got to look at the light. Number two, you got to look at composition. Number three, you need to make sure your focus is sharp. All of these things. You can't, you're not just going to be, you know, spraying and praying or, or, or just pointing and clicking and just shoot, shoot, shoot. I want you to concentrate. Whatever the next shoot is, if you want some kind of a challenge, and this is a real challenge. I've done it myself and I'm good at it. And I've had other people tell me that, that it just changed the way that they're working because they're forced to look. 
whether it's in the camera or you know just around to find something interesting you know I look around this park right now and I see all kinds of interesting stuff that I can photograph but it's a, just a matter of of seeing it first and then going after it instead of just going in blindly without being able to capture those awesome images uh, you know you're, you're just kind of just you know you're just spraying and praying and hoping you get something good when you start turning yourself around like this and seeing these things ahead of time pre-visualizing and seeing the light before uh, you capture I'm telling you your photos are gonna get much much better so uh, I think that's it for today Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com